On the left is an image captured by NASA's Galileo spacecraft in April of 1997. Only about four months later, in September of 1997, the Galileo spacecraft captured this image of the same area. So, as very clearly visible, a huge dark spot appeared. It has a diameter of about 400 kilometers, so it has a surface area larger than about 20 US states. What likely occurred here is an eruption, specifically a volcanic plume, which creates this massive umbrella shape out of the materials that are ejected. This plume was spotted by NASA's New Horizons probe on its way to Pluto. This plume reached a height of 330 kilometers. It makes sense that Io is volcanically active. It has a similar distance to the center of Jupiter as the Moon does from Earth. And yet, the orbit of Io is also not perfectly circular. It is slightly elongated. Enough such that when the distance to Jupiter changes, that creates friction in the interior of Io, leading to immense and constant volcanic activity. That is also why Io's surface is so young. It entirely lacks craters because they are quickly being erased. Volcanic plumes on Io frequently come out of volcanic depressions, which are called patera. Although seemingly they appear to be lava lakes, what they actually are is more nuanced. In total, there are at least 160 named volcanic depressions on Io, and they have an average diameter of 70 kilometers. Some of these volcanic depressions are inactive, like this one that is 56 kilometers across and is around 1.4 kilometers deep. However, many of these volcanic depressions are active hotspots. That's what this Juno image captured on Io, unusually hot regions. And from this image, it's easy to think that this is actual lava. Even with images in the visible spectrum, like this one of Lokipatera, it appears that it has a bunch of liquid rock. This massive depression has a diameter of about 200 kilometers. In the middle of the depression, there is even an island. But what exactly is it surrounded by? Well, it's not exactly lava, at least not at all times. This is an artist's concept of what NASA's Juno spacecraft saw during one of its flybys. According to NASA, the specular reflection recorded by the instruments on the spacecraft suggests that the surface of this lake is as smooth as glass. So maybe the artist's concept of what Loki looks like up close is accurate. The surface really could be smooth and very reflective, but it's not exactly clear as to what image is being recreated up close. One of the very few publicly available images that we have of Io from Juno does show the Loki Patera, but it's not a very high quality image. So it's not really clear by how much the surface of Loki Patera is reflective. But what we do have a pretty good idea of is what substance is present in Loki and other volcanic depressions on Io. Now, it is true that actual liquid lava is frequently present in these lakes. And since that is the case, could we swim in that lava? Well, we are going to see how that might be possible during certain times later in the video. This is a temperature map that was created using the Large Binocular Telescope in Arizona. This temperature map was gathered on the 8th of March in 2015. During that time, from the position of Earth, Europa passed in front of Io. While passing in front of Io, then also reflected small amounts of infrared light off of Europa's water ice surface. Then the temperature map was created using the infrared light gathered from the alignment. And what the temperature map reveals is that at the time, part of this depression was only 56 degrees Celsius at the hottest recorded part. Now, that is still impressive given that Io is five times more distant from the Sun than Earth, which leads to the surface temperature typically being minus 130 degrees Celsius. However, for a rock to be liquid on Io and on Earth, it would have to be about 1200 degrees Celsius. So that tells us that what we are seeing here is not lava. Now the reason that temperatures of about 1200 degrees Celsius are required for lava on both Io and Earth is because volcanic activity on both Io and Earth releases basalt. Basalt is a type of rock that doesn't exactly have a chemical formula that is consistent. However, typically, basalt has plenty of iron 
and magnesium. What the temperature map of Loki reveals is that the hottest parts recorded at the southeastern end were about 56 degrees Celsius, while the coldest parts at the western end were about 0 degrees Celsius. The researchers which created the temperature map think that the reason behind this is due to overturning lava. What that means is that actual liquid lava first got exposed in the western end, which is why the rock there is significantly cooler, while the southeastern end got exposed lava a lot more recently, so there wasn't enough time for it to cool down as much as the basalt rock on the western end. At the time at which the recording was made, lava was exposed on the western end about 200 days prior to the recording. And for the southeastern end, it was exposed 75 days prior to the recording. As to why there is this pattern where lava first appears to be on the western end and then slowly goes to the eastern end, that isn't known for sure. Maybe the depression first appeared on the western region. The way lava appears on the surface of Loki and other volcanic depressions is likely through solidification. So lava on the surface cools down and solidifies to the point at which it is significantly more dense than the liquid rock below, which causes the solidified lava to sink and for the more liquid lava to be propped up on the surface. And potentially, during those critical moments, right when the lava is starting to seep through the surface, while being near Loki, we could use that moment to swim in the lava. We can't swim in lava even on Earth, let alone on Io. So, although not currently possible, Let's see what would be required to swim in lava on Io. First of all, a human trip to Io itself isn't a solved problem. The resources required and the health effects of a multi-year space travel aren't mitigated with current technology, so that would first need to be solved. And then, potentially an even bigger problem is the fact that Io is so incredibly close to Jupiter that it is basically showered in intense radiation that even sometimes causes spacecraft systems to malfunction, damages some minerals, and can basically annihilate biological systems in a matter of hours. So the suit that would allow us to swim in lava on Io would also need to protect us from the intense radiation, while on top of all of that, it would also need to allow us to move our legs and arms in order to swim. Besides the immense problems with regards to getting a functional suit, just getting to where lava is in current volcanic depressions on its own is pretty hard. These depressions typically have very steep walls. In this image is a view of Tupanpatera. It is about 80 kilometers across, and the steep walls of this volcanic depressions are very clearly visible. They are about 900 meters tall. That is pretty typical for a volcanic depression on Io. Just like Loki, there is also an island in the middle of Tupan. The very colorful floor of this volcanic depression is due to various sulfuric compounds. Interestingly, one study found, based on the Galileo data, that the temperatures at the eastern end of this depression reached about 470 degrees Celsius in some parts. Although not enough for rock to be liquid, this recorded temperature is still quite a bit greater than the one that was recorded on Loki so far. So it is very likely that just like in Loki, at certain times, actual liquid lava is exposed on the surface of Tupan. As to whether or not that quantity is significant enough for humans to have us women, we don't really know. However, what we do know is that, besides lava being in volcanic depressions, lava is also present in the surrounding regions near them. There are some extremely vast lava flows on Io, right next to where a patera is. In this image, in the upper right, we can see Prometheus Patera, but right next to it is a huge lava flow that is about 100 kilometers across. This is an image of an even greater lava flow which spread across 330 kilometers. Here is another image of a lava flow on Io. We can see how in many directions the lava flows have spread from the Patera in the center. There are also many more huge lava flows on Io. The reason that they can get so huge is because lava on Io is basalt, which has, relatively speaking, a low viscosity, meaning it isn't exactly super thick. That allows for lava to spread across vast areas. Still, liquid basalt isn't as viscous as water, not even close. Its viscosity is a lot more similar to ketchup. 
so that alone tells us that the swimming process would be pretty tough in lava on Io. But how would we go about swimming? Well, we could wait for a lava flow to appear. Or maybe we could also wait directly around a patera until parts of the solid basalt starts to sink, which exposes lava. Waiting around for lava flows could be pretty dangerous if we are near a generally active region. Lava flows on Io typically spread in a greater volume and much more quickly on Io than on Earth. Volcanically active regions on Io are overall pretty dangerous because of plumes. The plumes that created this region happened in a patera and the eruption lasted for a couple of months. Eventually, the eruption reached a temperature of 1600 degrees Celsius and it delivered a good amount of lava. But let's just say that we somehow found just the right amount of lava in some patera and are about to jump in. What sort of suit could handle that? Obviously, it's very hard to say what could actually work, but some ideas could maybe work. So one problem with basalt lava is that it is very dense, about 3 grams per centimeters cubic. The density of humans is about 1 gram per centimeters cubic, which is similar to water. Humans are mostly just water, so we couldn't actually even sink in lava because the lower density stuff floats on top of higher density stuff. However, that is true unless the lava suit that we have is sufficiently dense. With certain materials, we could prop up our density to be around 3 grams per centimeters cubic. By doing that, we aren't so incredibly dense such that we sink to the bottom immediately, but we also aren't so low in density such that we can barely get our feet to sink. A maybe good material that we could use to prop up our density is tungsten. It is a metal, an element, that has a density of 19 grams per centimeter cubic. So it is one of the densest elements out there. But another very good property of tungsten is that its melting point is 3400 degrees Celsius. So about 2000 degrees Celsius above the melting point of basalt. Meaning having the outermost layer in a suit made out of tungsten is maybe a good idea. However, it is far from being sufficient to survive lava. And that is because tungsten alone doesn't insulate you from the heat of the lava, so you would still cook inside the suit unless you get a layer that insulates you extremely well from the extreme heat. Now, a massive problem for this suit is the problem of what needs to be used for the joints to be flexible, because lots of flexible materials easily melt under lava. So that is obviously a massive problem. But let's say that that is somehow magically solved. How would we even insulate the person from the extreme heat? One material can maybe help there, and that is aerogel. It can be made from, for example, silica, which is silicon dioxide, or carbon-based polymers. Polymers are large molecules which have these repeating patterns. It's been demonstrated through using extremely hot flames way above the temperature of basalt lava that aerogel can insulate from those temperatures. Now the problem is typically that aerogel is very brittle, but there are other substances that can be added to it such that it is sufficiently malleable. The aerogel layer would probably need to be under the tungsten layer, but there is another layer that is absolutely crucial for survival on Io, and that is the layer with air. So underneath tungsten in the aerogel should be a pressurized suit. Io doesn't have a significant atmosphere, so having a pressurized suit is necessary. Now obviously to have the insulating aerogel layer on top of a pressurized suit, the amount of tungsten needed would have to be pretty significant, so a pretty bulky suit is probably necessary. Now it could be the case that the aerogel simply cannot handle the temperatures necessary for a lava swim, and if that is the case, what could be done is having a layer between the tungsten and the pressurized suit that has a lot of liquid cooling. Particularly, attached to the suit could be a cable or many cables that are constantly delivering cold water into the suit so that a person is insulated from the heat. Probably plenty of water would need to be delivered, so that water could come from a large chamber that has plenty of cold water stored, and that large chamber could have a cable through which it is delivering that cold water into the suit. Obviously, this is extremely hard to make. And on top of that being challenging, if it is delivering the cold water too slowly, the person inside the suit would cook. But if it is delivering the cold water too quickly, then the person inside the suit could become stuck as the rapid cooling of the suit 
could also cool down the surrounding lava, causing it to start solidifying, which could trap a person. Also, it could easily be the case that the water cooling idea is not feasible at all in reality. Maybe if the insulation required is too thick, then that would make the swimming impossible. But if the insulation is not thick enough, then the surrounding lava would cool down too rapidly. Still, even if this lava swimming spacesuit is somehow possible through whatever design, which we don't really know if it is possible, still it is probably the case that even the best possible design would have to be pretty bulky. So if the suit is bulky, and on top of that, lava has the viscosity of ketchup, the best possible outcome is having a suit that allows us to mostly just float on lava. And with slight and rigid arm movements, we could maybe propel ourselves through the lava extremely slowly. So although it is technically swimming, it is definitely not the exciting type. So tungsten as the outermost layer is just one potential material that could be used. Aerogel or water cooling or both together for insulation from the heat are also some potential materials that would work. But again, it needs to be emphasized, it is far from certain that these materials could work. On top of that, the solution for getting flexible insulating joints is not clear at all. And it's especially challenging when we consider that all of that needs to be stacked on top of a pressurized suit, which on its own is pretty bulky. And the difficulty of creating a lava swimming suit for Io gets especially ridiculous when we consider that on top of all of that, we would also need to have something that could shield us from the extremely deadly radiation. So overall, when we consider different potential space achievements, such as landing on Mars or Titan, climbing different mountains on these objects, swimming in the methane lakes of Titan, or even further, visiting with humans planets that are outside of the solar system, it's not even crazy to say that swimming in Io's lakes successfully is harder than all of those incredibly impressive things. So it could be the case that even while humans are out there on Titan, with advanced self-sustaining colonies, even then they could only dream of swimming in Io's lakes. They might even get to speculate on that topic while swimming in one of Titan's liquid methane lakes.